There's a big debate going on about Christ is King. Is it a political slogan or is it a declaration of faith? We're going to get into that. And Donald Trump selling Bibles today on Fearless. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me. Man, do we have an awesome show planned for you today. Uh, if you're listening over Apple, hit that five-star rating. We need to help you. We need you to help us uh, fight the algorithm. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the like, hit the subscription, hit the notifications, pound those buttons, help us fight the algorithm. Uh, the other thing you can do is go to blazetv.com and buy a subscription. BlazeTV.com slash fearless. The most important thing you can do to support this channel is to buy a subscription to the Blaze. Use my promo code fearless. You can save $20 on your yearly subscription. That's BlazeTV.com slash fearless. Uh, we want to thank our great friends at Good Ranchers. This episode today is brought to you by our good friends at Good Ranchers. Fall in love with beef, chicken, and seafood all over again by subscribing at GoodRanchers.com. Use my code FEARLESS to get $150 worth of free chicken wings for a year, plus $20 off your subscription. Good Ranchers is so good to us. Uh, you guys need to be good to Good Ranchers because they help me do shows uh, like we're going to do today. So we got a great fire starter for you today. Uh, we're gonna talk about Donald Trump, Crisis King, we're going to start with uh, our main man, Donald Trump. Uh, billionaires, they should give away Bibles, not sell them, especially on the day their social media stock profits them $8 billion. Donald Trump has made a significant blunder partnering with country singer Lee Greenwood to hawk God Bless the USA Bibles. Greenwood reached a licensing agreement with Trump to use the former president's name, image, and likeness to sell Bibles for $60 a pop. Tuesday, Greenwood and Trump launched a website and released a promotional video featuring Trump. Let's watch the entire promotional video because I want to play this in context. I want Trump to be in context. I want my criticism to be in context. Let's watch the video. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood, who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard to keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this God bless the USA Bible. And it's just very important and very important to me. I want to have a lot of people have it. You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. Many of you have never read them and don't know the liberties and rights you have as Americans and how you are being threatened to lose those rights. It's happening all the time. It's a very sad thing that's going on in our country, but we're going to get it turned around. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. And I truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. We've lost religion in our country. All Americans need a Bible in their home and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. Religion is so important, it's so missing, but it's gonna come back and it's gonna come back strong just like our country is gonna come back strong. In the end, we do not answer to bureaucrats in Washington, we answer to God in heaven. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. We must defend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be again a great nation. 
Our founding fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Pray, get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and the legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back, and to make America great again. I'm proud to partner with Lee in this offering. He's a very special man, both as a talent, but maybe even more so as a human being. He's very, very special. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. So there's a lot he said there that I actually agree with. And, 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 but there's something he's doing here that I strongly disagree with. And, and so I get why the Bible, it, it comes with copies of the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, the Pledge of Allegiance. I really don't have a problem with that, but this is a really bad idea and it's really poorly timed. Yesterday, Donald Trump's Seuss Truth social media app, it went public. The stock price soared, netting Trump more than $8 billion and fixing all of his cash flow problems. In addition, We've seen this week a judge slash the ridiculous $455 million bond that New York Attorney General Letitia James sought against Trump in her ridiculous lawfare pursuit of the GOP candidate for president. This week, Trump told the media he'll pay, he'll now pay the new $175 million in cash. Despite all the political persecution, Donald Trump is blessed. He's favored to win back the presidency. His financial troubles are behind him. Atlanta District Attorney Fannie Willis has been disgraced. Now is the time to give away Bibles, not sell them. The appearance that Trump wants to profit off Jesus and Christian faith is an awful look. He should take down the website and hand out copies of the God Bless the USA Bible at all of his future rallies. And after that, Trump should crack open one of those Bibles. And the first thing I'd have him read is Matthew 19 and 24. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Rich people, they tend to focus too much energy on securing more wealth or protecting the wealth they already have it distracts them from securing more righteousness and protecting their spiritual values. They put their faith in money more than God. It's a mistake, a trap. We all make it, I know I have. When we think we can buy everything we need, that's a problem. The truth is all we need will be provided by God. Trump is not all wrong here. If American citizens studied and understood the Bible, they would be less likely to question the brilliance and fairness of our Constitution, Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. They would value this country's founding principles. I don't have a problem with packaging the Bible with this country's founding documents. Obviously, the Bible does not need to be packaged with anything. It's a standalone document that requires no endorsement or supporting material. However, we live in a time when the absence of biblical knowledge is undermining the very freedoms that allow us to pursue biblical knowledge. Politicians and institutions are implementing laws, rules, and standards that are defining scripture as hate speech. The desire for religious freedom and a belief in Christianity inspired this nation's founding. Trump and other political figures recognized that many American evangelicals are longing for a, re a reboot to factory settings. 
You can see it in the slogans being shouted. America first, make America great again. Christ is king. Yes, Christ is king is our factory setting. The founders designed a political system that reflected biblical wisdom. Understanding the Bible is the best way to understand our constitution and our system of government. By selling Bibles, Trump is legitimizing criticisms that argue his political movement is fraudulent, a religious hustle. He needs to take down the website and hand out Bibles. He should also tell his supporters to quit analogizing his political persecution to the persecution of Jesus Christ. It's another bad look. As believers, we should also offer Trump a bit of grace. On Sunday, I spent much of the day reading the Bible and engaging with my X slash Twitter audience about the Christ is King slogan that has been politicized. A wise responder pointed me to Paul's words in Philippians 1:15, 1 and 15 through 18. Let me read those scriptures. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Giving away Bibles. That would be a great way for Donald Trump to proclaim Christ is King. So <clears throat> we're going to have a discussion with Anthony and Virgil uh, about one, the Trump selling Bibles, pimping Bibles, and, and that's a bad look. We may end up having, I think we'll all agree on that. We may have a little bit of a debate about whether uh, it's appropriate to uh, combine the Bible with the founding documents. I don't have a problem with it. I understand why some people are put off by it, uh, but I really don't have a problem with it because Again, an understanding of the Bible would help people understand the brilliance of our founding documents. And it's that foundational understanding that we all need to tamp down because there are many things Trump says here in this video that, that, that he released that are a thousand percent true. There are things many of us have been saying for years Bring back Christianity. Our culture has gotten away from our Christian founding. We have to bring that back. It's why things have gone so haywire in this culture. Uh, what, what I wrote down some other things. He said, oh, we need to defend content that's pro-God. Uh, we have to defend God in the public square. Uh, Bring back religion, it's what's missing. These are things Trump said that I think most people, most believers, 1,000% agree with. Packaging that message with, and hey, I got a $60 Bible I wanna sell you, and someone has paid me uh, to use my name, image, and likeness, and so I'm going to profit off of this. That's not a good look, that's inappropriate, and particularly, when you lose the ability, when you get so caught up in uh, the things happening to you that you lose sight of like, whoa, look at all these great things happening to me as well. The United States has never, based on my understanding, and I think factually, has never had someone get elected to president, lose the presidency, and then be the favorite to become the president again. And, and, and I get and understand why Trump is frustrated, the lawfare and all the different unfair ways he's being attacked. But let's not lose sight of the fact he's apparently right now headed back to the presidency, just had $8 billion 
put back on his portfolio because of True Social. And one of the reasons why True Social is as valuable as it is, is because of the unfair lawfare and how they have made Trump a martyr. And so a bunch of rocks have been thrown at Donald Trump and they've all piled up and now he gets to stand on top of those rocks and he's even taller. He's got to recognize the blessing in that. And, and he can't just get caught up in feeling sorry for himself. And I understand the kind of attack he's been under. But, but net, when you get blessed the way he's been blessed, you need to start thinking of ways of like, how do I express this gratitude? How do I, if you want to make these words that he's saying sound legitimate and true, that the Bible is his favorite book, we need to bring back Christianity. You need to drop to your knees, thank God, and then start figuring out ways. Well, how can I thank God for these incredible blessings? I know, man, I, I just got $8 billion. Let me take one million of it. And let me do the math here. I'm not good with math, so I gotta go to my phone and let me find my utilities here. And so I'm going to punch in, uh-oh, there we go, ah, oh, crap. Let me punch in one million dollars, and I'm gonna divide it by 60. Looks like Trump could give away is this right? 16,666 Bibles at $66 a pop. Is that right? That seems low. Let me do it again. You guys correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. 1 million divided by 60. Yeah, it's 16,666. He'd give away. So, you know what? Let, let me go ahead and double that. Let's take 2 million of that $8 billion and give away 32,000 Bibles. Do that. Don't try to reach in people's pockets. Don't, don't, not when you just got $8 billion. You, you know what we could do with that $8 billion? Let's, let's, let's do this. Let me punch $8 billion in here. Uh, wouldn't 10% of $8 billion? Ten, what is 10% of $8 billion? $800 million? Am I right there? Uh, so if he tied on that eight billion, he could take eight hundred million dollars and buy Bibles and give them away. He could dang near give everybody a Bible, or everybody that wanted one a Bible. Let's do that. Let's lean into gratitude and how can I say thank you, Jesus? If you want to make these words he's saying true, if you want to back that up, but don't come out here selling Bibles with Lee Greenwood, who's been financially blessed as well. Again, selling Bibles. No, we need a Bible giveaway. And so <clears throat> I, I, I want to stop there because, again, me and Anthony and Virgil, we're going to talk about the Trump deal. Then we're going to pivot and talk about this whole Christ is King debate because there is people who are, are so frustrated and, and th they are politicizing uh, Christian faith. And I don't, I gotta be honest, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I, I don't blame them because people want to, hey, let's return to factoring settings. Let's go all the way back to the beginning and let's center Christ. And so when I hear people chanting Christ is King, that's what I hear is like people like, Man, we got to go back to the very beginning of this because we have lost our way. We, we moved off our finance, our, our foundational belief that Christ is king. Let's restore that and then evaluate the world from that perspective and start coming up with solutions that celebrate, honor, glorify, back up that. It's been turned into this very divisive issue, partially because of the Candace Owens Daily Wire controversy, but this Nick Fuentes guy that everybody seems to know a great deal about, but I don't. Uh, but I get why people are shouting Christ is King and I understand why it's popular. Uh, anyway, I'll discuss it with Anthony and Virgil uh, just around the corner before I do that. 
I want to talk with you guys about my great friends and our great friends at Cardio Miracle. Uh, man, I, I can't give a more sincere endorsement every time I share the good news of our sponsor and friends, Cardio Miracle. Uh, the team at Cardio Miracle are patriots. They're health and liberty advocates and passionate about the well-being of the unborn. Cardio Miracle has over 50 of the finest food, plant, and herbal ingredients that help stimulate your body to create safe and sustained nitric oxide like you did as a teenager or as a 25-year-old. It can replace most supplements you take daily with each delicious glass. The energy, clarity, and stamina it provides all day and even at nighttime is amazing. I've been taking Cardio Miracle for more than 90 days and I'm blown away at the results and how I feel and how my workouts have improved. I'm blown away about all the different, I've probably now sent Cardio Miracle to at least 20 of my friends and family members and I have not gotten one bad review. All I've gotten back is like, man, Jason, this has improved, that has improved. I told you all last week about my mother and her blood work and how ecstatic she is. I, I just, our producer, David Reed, the results he's getting. This stuff works. I can't stress enough. We should all be using this and utilizing this and raising our nitric oxide levels. Uh, when you buy, it comes with a Fearless Army friendly 60 day unconditional money back guarantee. Try it today and you will never feel this good from a drink this easy to take. There are no synthetic ingredients, no GMO, no sugar, no stimulants, minimal calories and uses the finest natural organic flavors. It is like a smooth raspberry lemonade Kool-Aid and your boy loves it. In fact, <laughs> I've been drinking it all day. This isn't just another supplement. It is a serious game changer. Go to my personal link, cardiomiracle.com slash fearless. Use my promo code fearless to get 10% off your first order, or you, can, or you can subscribe and save 15% off with free shipping. That's cardiomiracle.com slash fearless. Anthony and Virgil, a little Tennessee harmony, a little discussion about Donald Trump and Christ is King, next. Hello, Fearless Army. I'm Jason Whitlock, your leader. I'm going to spend 2024 discussing growth and sacrifice. Hard times are here. Harder times are coming. What has stopped American growth and caused a regression in fundamental freedoms and values? A lack of sacrifice. Our ancestors sacrificed for our benefit. We have not sacrificed to protect the progress they died for. No sacrifice no freedom. What impedes man's willingness to sacrifice? His ignorance, his perversion, his pride, his ingratitude, and his cowardice, his rejection of God. The Bible is a story about the power and the necessity of sacrifice. Sacrifice is the sun, rain, and fertilizer of growth. Growth is our life purpose. Grow in the knowledge, wisdom, fear, obedience, and reverence to the most high. Growth requires sacrifice will be our theme for Roll Call 2.0 this summer, June 1, right back here in Nashville. We're excited to welcome you. Let me spend a minute explaining what G-R-O-W-T-H actually stands for, for us in the Fearless Army. The G is for game plan. In order to properly grow, it's essential we work from the strategic game plan spelled out in the Bible. The R, responsibility. As we grow as men, we understand and accept our responsibilities to God, family, and teammates. The O, ownership. We embrace ownership of our destiny. Outsiders do not determine our fate. The W, wisdom. We honor, value, and share the wisdom imparted to us by elders, coaches, and leaders. The T, trust. We must be worthy of trust. The reliability of a man's word defines him far more than popularity and material possessions. The H, humility. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor 
and life. That's straight from Proverbs 22 and 4. Come join us in Nashville as we talk about growth and sacrifice and how without sacrifice, there will be no growth. Roll Call 2.0 right here in Nashville, Saturday, June 1st. I love Caitlin Clark. Perhaps I was too caught up in defending Clark from her bigoted and jealous critics. Yeah, that'll go in the record books as Caitlin Clark is the all-time, whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is, but that's the way it'll be. And, and I don't think it should be. And I couldn't see that Clark has some uh, Johnny Manziel tendencies. <laughs> Foolishly, I thought a young woman from an from Iowa wouldn't act as arrogantly as a Texas quarterback. What does this word mean to you? Cabo. Good times. At this point, it's quite clear Clayton Clark isn't much different from Colorado quarterback Shador Sanders. You, you guys remember Shador that gets all up in everybody's face and points to his watches? What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. Welcome back, uh, Anthony and Virgil with me. Anthony, if you'd bless our conversation. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your blessings. Father, help us to continually to embrace truth because we know that your word is truth. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So you guys just heard me say, I don't like Trump selling Bibles. I think that's ridiculous. And I think if he wants to validate and legitimize his message, he should be giving away Bibles, uh, particularly if he believes the Bible mixed with the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence help people understand uh, America and its founding. A uh, man of his wealth, there's recently this sort of financial blessing, you know, give Bibles, don't, don't, don't sell them. Why, why should he be trying to profit off of the Bible and off Jesus Christ? That makes no sense to me. That's pretty much my only, but your reaction, your thoughts to this. Over. I was disgusted when I saw it. Like it was just, it, it really turned my stomach. Why? And when I listened to the message and I know you give him some kudos for saying, hey, this is my favorite book and we need some of these points. But I'm asking just if that's really how you feel, why not come out with a two or three minute clip saying all those things about God's word? Hey, I believe in the power of faith. I believe in what God has done for me. This is my favorite book. I believe everybody should read a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, hey, come to my website. I'll make sure you have one. But everybody should read their Bible. This is the, I mean, all those same things. But when you package it with one, just the sale of this, you know, this commercial angle. There's a profit piece to it. There's the endorsement piece, one. But then secondly, I have issue with it being packaged with those founding documents because in the package, this promotes an Americanized faith and not just a faith that stands on its own. The gospel that I preach is universal. It, it goes wherever. So it, I couldn't sell that Bible to people in China. They don't have the freedom they don't have. Now you can say, man, I would love for you guys to have the freedoms that we have, but the freedom that we really need to have is our freedom from sin. And we can only find that in the gospel of Christ. So that's just the word of God. It doesn't need to be packaged with anything straight, no chaser. So I, I was turned off by the whole thing. Virgil? Yeah, my, my first response upon seeing uh, that that he was doing this, I I, I jokingly uh, sent Anthony and some of you guys a text. It said my my, my in depth analysis is is summed up in one word, and the word is yuck. You know, I just thought this was a poor. This is, I I completely agree with the fire starter that you put together um, at at the outset, Jason. So so let me let me pause and say kudos to you, Jason. That that fire starter was was everything that Virgil it was set up is, to be. Is, is, 
Yeah, thank God. We Our got an eclipse <laughs> coming up, so maybe that's. <laughs> Continue. It was it was it was it was it was great. I, I thought it was it was wise. The 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 financial component of this that that Trump uh, aligns himself with. I, I recognize that anyone who's selling Bibles uh, is looking to make a profit. No, nobody is doing you know n- nobody's doing a, a ton of this kind of work for free. There are some organizations who sell Bibles and who utilize some of the proceeds to offer free Bibles to others, and I think that's you know that's to be that's you know that's to be commended. But Trump is not one of those who has need for this. He's not a theologian. Uh, He is not a biblical expert or Bible commentator. Uh, I also agree. I think it's it's just not a good look uh, to put in the Bible uh, the Constitution. The 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 Bible is a book for all people uh, in every nation, of every tribe, tongue, and nation. Uh, It is not just for uh, Christians. Uh, It is not just for, you know, I I think there's a place for us to learn about our founding documents and understand that they were framed from a biblical worldview. I don't think there's any problem with that. I wouldn't I wouldn't stuff them in the back of a Bible, uh, package it with, you know, God bless America and send it out. It's just it's just it's, it's, it's just not a good look at all. I think it's really bad. Let me play devil's advocate a little bit here that Trump is trying to reach an American audience. Oh, yes. So he's not concerned with anybody else on the globe. And and he's uh, arguing that, uh, look, the freedoms that we all value here and, and are instilled in our founding documents, the source for them are the Bible. And, and I know some people... Uh, have a different interpretation of history, but I think if you go back and read what any of the founding fathers said, and then if you just go look at the principles and concepts set up the way our system of government is, it's, it's consistent with what he's arguing, that the source of all these freedoms, and we have this debate, it's like uh, Vince Ellison, who's come on this show, we have a fundamental disagreement going on in this country right now about where our rights come from. Right. Do they come from God or do they come from government? And so Trump, and not the way that I would do it uh, or, or any of us would do it, is trying to tell people, I think, you know, he's not doing, he's not being effective. And he's, again, he's trying to profit off of it. Uh, which is a mistake, but he's trying to tell people like, no, your rights come from God. He, he actually says that in this deal. And there is that fundamental debate going on that that is someone does need to stand up loudly and proclaim, hey, our rights come from God. And don't get caught up in this government stuff. Don't get caught up in all this detachment and secular worldview we got going on. We got to go back to the foundation, and it's the Bible, and and so he, he's he's a politician. He's not a theologian. He's not a minister, and so he's selling that message in his mind in a way that's appropriate for a politician. Uh, you've introduced some more problems. Then uh, why not? If that's if that's your heart, he says it's his favorite book. He says that this is what I don't I believe love. that. Well, okay. I, I, yeah, I don't believe that. All right. Again, it's hard for me. I sh- probably shouldn't judge. Yeah. But I am making that judgment. So if if we say if that's what he truly believes, yeah. then his life is the selling point. Everything about his life will radiate. This is why I believe what I believe. So much so that my pattern of my life is conducted off of God's word. How I look at policy goes back to God's word. How I interpret history goes back to God's word. That's if you really believe it. And again, I'm still looking at the redundancy of why do I need to sell a Bible to do this? Why do I need to sell and package the Constitution to do this? I mean, there's so many free apps, free Bibles, this and and I'll say this as well. He has probably the most profitable megaphone that we could say historically. I mean, his tweets prior to running for president were everybody stops. Every tweet broke the Internet because of that megaphone. So, again, with that megaphone and platform that he has, 
Here is a post on my website. Here's a post on Truth Social on a day that was very you know, profitable for it or whatnot. Everybody's already looking at it. Let me tell you guys what I really believe and why I think this is such a critical point in turning our nation the right way. I think everybody needs to read a Bible. I think everybody needs to read the Constitution. I think everybody needs to look at this. And this is why I believe what I believe. Mission accomplished. But to sell a Bible now that corrupts the message. And as a communicator, you don't want anything to corrupt the message that you're really trying to get across. So I, I don't I, I see it as, as Trump often up. corrupts his message, his own message. Yeah, he, he, he does that a lot. Yeah. Uh, and so Virgil and then Anthony, you chime in as well. What do you think of uh, Paul saying, even when it's not done with the best intentions, mm -hmm. They're preaching Jesus. I rejoice. How, how do you respond to that, Virgil? No, I saw the I saw that the, the, you you quoted the text from Philippians, and it, it's a it's a powerful message because it's it's one where Paul is in prison when he writes the church the the the, uh, the letter uh, to the church at Philippi, and and basically makes the statement, you know, I'm, I'm here, I am in prison, and there are those bad actors who are trying to take advantage of my imprisonment. But, you know, whether or not they have great motives or poor motives, it, it doesn't matter so long as Christ is, is, is preached, you know, and Christ and him crucified is preached. I, I think that's a wonderful way to look at it. Uh, to the to the point you made earlier about uh, about you know we we our rights come from God not government. It's difficult to to acknowledge that when you have a Bible that has both God's word and then it has governmental um, you know uh, 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 letters you know Bill of Rights Constitution and those kinds of things are, that that are attached to it. it. It it corrupts the message to the point that both of you men uh, are making. I'm not mad at Trump for making money. I'm glad that he made money on True Social, especially in light of all of the the uh, you know what he's the pushback that he's getting in, in New York and uh, and the like with with some of these lawsuits. I'm happy that that he made the money and is able to pay pay his bills. I just wish to the point you both are are making that he wouldn't he wouldn't get in his own way. Um, he made money on on Trump sneakers, selling it to young people and, and those in the black community. There were those who were hyped up on on the the image of him, uh, you know, uh, uh, being being put into uh, in, in jail. The the uh, the picture of, of him that, that went viral. Yeah, the mugshot that that went viral of, of him. All of that, all of that is you know, he's a hype man. That's exactly who he is, and he's appealing to different segments of the American audience. I totally get that. I think if we can think about it in light of that, uh, it, it, it you know it, it doesn't really raise a big big flag. It's more of who Trump is. It's a more of an indication that he's able to, in, with the best of intentions, to get in his own way and to produce bad looks for himself. And and as president, we're only going to see more and more of this kind of behavior. Anthony, I, I'll I, I know why you were repulsed. And, and you didn't use these words, but listening to you talk now and listening to this conversation, it's like, man, we just had a used car salesman sell the Bible. Mm -hmm. yes. and, 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 yes. and again, and it may be unintentional on Trump's part, but that is what happened. And, and, and so I get why, and if, to me, this is such a simple solution, and this is where I wonder about the people around Trump or his willingness to listen to people around Trump. But, but you just made $8 billion. If this man had just come out and said, you know what, I'm giving away 8,000, 18,000, 20,000, 800,000 Bibles, because that's how thankful I am, and that he had just left it at that, mm -hmm. nobody would be able to, there, we couldn't offer any criticism. Mm -mm. No, no, but because of the political angle, because of the used car salesman tactic, we, now it corrupts even what you're wanting them to get out of it. You'll have a lot of people who have criticized to say, man, you know, read the very Bible that you're talking about. You know, gather some insight from that about what you're doing. To your point about what Paul was saying, and, and I think we have to be careful because that scripture is being used to validate some other issues Paul is speaking, as Virgil pointed out, primarily about how they were treating him. They were using his faith in Christ as a mockery. And he's saying, hey, if Christ is priest, I'm good with that. But what he's not saying 
is that I condone by any means necessary that we, you know, he's really saying, hey, I have my faith in Christ and I know why they're attacking me. But at the end of the day, they don't realize they're actually preaching Christ. But let's Mm -hmm. not use that to validate any other nefarious reason why we may use Christ as well. So I want to pivot uh, to the Christ is King discussion. And this has all come to a head and a big conversation. Uh, Candace Owens and the Daily Wire have separated from each other. Uh, A lot of it has to do with the conflict, the friction between herself and Ben Shapiro. Candace seems to be new and passionate in her faith uh, right now. And and Ben Shapiro is uh, a Jew who runs the Daily Wire or who founded the Daily Wire. Jeremy Boring actually runs the Daily Wire, but they've been going back and forth, particularly ever since October 7th and the events that happened in Gaza uh, and between Hamas and and Israel. They've been going back and forth and part of Candace's response and going back and forth with Ben Shapiro at one point, she tweeted, she ended a tweet by saying, she quoted the Bible and then said, Christ is King. Some people have interpreted that as anti-Semitic. And so Andrew Clavin, who uh, works uh, at the Daily Wire and obviously is friends with Shapiro and certainly had a working relationship with Candace Owens, he did a podcast this weekend where he criticized Candace Owens and then and kind of alleged that Uh, Christ is King is being used by people who are anti-Semitic. So I want to start there and play uh, this clip from Andrew Clavin, uh, where he said, you know, the Christ is King is being used by people who are anti-Semitic. Let's play the clip. You know, when I did this, by the way, the priest who baptized me said, you know, Christians won't accept you. They'll, you'll still be a Jew. And I said, well, I am. A, that's my race. I'm a Jew. I'm proud of my race. It's a, it's a great race. It's done many, many great things, including write the Bible. And, you know, I am a Jew. But that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King, anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King. And one day, every knee will bow and recognize it because he's not just my king, he's king of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews, you are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your purposes, and that to me is specifically wicked. So for someone like me, I'm not familiar with these groups and I've come to find out that this Nick Fuentes, I guess is the spearhead of this, but I'm, I'm largely unfamiliar. I think most people are largely unfamiliar. And so when I see people tweeting Christ is King, I'm not reading all these political machinations into it uh, but but I also don't believe in, in you know, Jeremy Boring, because uh, I asked the question on Sunday morning about, like, someone help me understand how Crisis King is anti-Semitic. Jeremy Boring responded back on Monday and made an analogy. It was like, well, of course it can be anti It's no different than a shovel. A shovel can be used to murder people. And, you know, it's not for that purpose. I'm not real comfortable with analogizing Crisis King to a shovel. I'm not sure if you can say Christ is king and harm someone. Uh, But anyway, I I just you Christ is king. Is it anti-Semitic? And you guys, there's a lot I'm not saying here, but I'm sure you saw a lot of the tweets and everything that was going on over the weekend. Where do y'all come down on whether Christ is king can be used as an anti-Semitic slur? Um, I I haven't known anyone, and and I'm not dismissing how they feel. I haven't known anyone to use that phrase with the intent of being anti-Semitic. If anything, it is just the stating of an obvious biblical truth. Revelations, he's king of kings, lord of lords. And even in one of the earliest points that we uh, hear prophecy about 
the kingship of, of Christ is in the Davidic covenant. Um, it is prophesied. It is promised. Second Samuel chapter seven, verse 12 and 13. God talks about I will establish uh, a king under your lineage, David, who will have a kingdom that will reign forever. Now, yes, that can refer to Solomon, but we understand that to be prophetic about Christ, uh, this kingdom that lasts forever. Christ is a Jew. So again, I have never heard of anyone to say Christ being king in my in all of my years of faith, of preaching and teaching mm -hmm. as anti-Semitic. Um, but now we've gotten in this era where understood truth triggers by itself just because it's true. But now we are more passionate about triggers than we are about mm -hmm. truth. And we, we choose the things like, man, this, you know, again, if if Joe Blow says Christ is king, I don't have a problem. But if Candace Owen says Christ is king now, it's a completely anti-Semitic phrase. And then everyone subsequent to Candace Owens that says it must agree and align with everything else she says and must be interpreted as such. We've done all of that with the triggers, but have we just gone back to look at the objective truth that the scripture does teach? Every knee will bow, every tongue confesses that he is Lord. So I, I, I'm troubled by the fact that we're getting to the place in society that we can't state objective truth without it being interpreted as the intent, oh, that's racist, oh, that's anti-Semitic, when this is just objective biblical truth. Right. Virgil? No, I think the, the, the biblical references, Revelation 17, 14, uh, Revelation 19, 17, that's where you're going to mm -hmm. find in Scripture the, the, the statement, you know, Christ is King, Jesus is Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And so uh, just from a biblical standpoint, what we're talking about is biblical language uh, as it relates to uh, who Christ is. Um, Christ is King is really fundamental uh, to the Christian confession of faith that, that he's the Lord of my life. He is the King of Kings. He is sovereign over all things. The, the idea, again, to, to the point Anthony made, the idea that this could be used as a as as some kind of anti-Semitic uh, pejorative, I, I had to go. I had to go do research to figure out how that was actually true, or who was actually using it uh, in that light. The vast majority of people I know aren't aren't using it uh, that way. I, I think the I think the response that people are having against the idea that Christ is King is anti-Semitic uh, is 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 the fact that Christians are constantly having language stripped from them. Uh, we're constantly having yes. ideas stripped from us. Uh, the idea, you know, we had we had the LGBTQ folks. It, it, they've taken the rainbow, and now they've allowed that to mean something totally different. Uh, you've got bad actors who are, who are you know, as, as far as it pertains to what a man is, what a woman is. Now we've got language we got to use around that re regarding people's pronouns. Uh, we we have to now redefine what marriage is because of bad actors wanting to take a biblical idea, which was marriage, which God invented and created and turn it into something that it does not mean. And, and I, I think Christians are pushing back to that and they're saying, listen, I'm not anti-Semitic, Christ is king. Uh, you know, and, and, and you know, with, when, they, when, um, when Ben Shapiro says things like, facts don't care about your feelings, I, I wanna add that to it and say, facts don't care about your feelings, Christ is king. Uh, that, that's at the end of the day where we stand. And, and the statement is not, is not a, uh, one where we've, we've decided that the, that the Jewish people are cut off, everyone, has free access to God through Jesus Christ, his son, who died for their sins. This is Passion Week. Uh, th this, the, the, I mean, it couldn't be a greater time for us to be talking about this idea, the fact that Christ is king and, and, uh, and he reigns and rules. This is the best time for us to talk about it. But again, for those who have hatred in their heart, the, the language Christ the king will be a, a starter point for them, but you'll be able to identify other things in their life and their lives that 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 point to the fact uh, that they are indeed Jew hating or anti-Semitic. I, I just think Christ the King is is of of all of of all the I've, of all the things you could point to is one of the very small ones that you could think about. One of the things that has struck me and and is that there's an assumption because I'm glad to hear Anthony. We did not talk about this before coming on air, but I'm glad to hear Anthony say like, man, 
I've been in this a long time and I've never heard anybody say it that way. Mm -mm. And so there's an assumption among, I think, some people that whatever their experiences are, are everybody's experience. Or that we know what you know. Mm -hmm. that, that, that it's like, now hold on, I've been having a religious experience in this lane for 40 some odd years. Yeah. 50 years for me, and, and, and this has never been on my radar. And so when I say to people like, like Nick Fuentes, yeah, I've heard about him, but I don't know nothing about him. And, 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 and I'm not saying that because I'm ducking him or whatever, but just my day-to-day -day life doesn't take me down that lane. And so I'm not aware of these people that are saying Christ is king and means something else by it. And I don't know enough about Nick Fuentes to evaluate what he means when he says it. I have mm -hmm. to take your word for it, yeah. and then you get upset when I say, well, I'm uncomfortable taking anybody's word about any, because I've seen myself mischaracterized, yeah. I've seen others mischaracterized, and, and that, well, you need to get up to date on it so that you can be this perfect human being, and, and, re and, and so we just have to be careful of that. I'm very cognizant of the fact that I live a unique life, uh, and and uh, have been in lanes where I don't expect white people or Jewish people or heck even some black people to even understand what all I know. Sure. I try to tell people all the time I don't really know that much, uh, <laughs> but but that's where I've been uncomfortable uh, with a lot of the discussion is the animus or the hostility or frustration. Well, how, how do you not know this? You, you know, well, hold on. You got to be respectful of my lived truth or experience, or experience. Yeah. and I just don't know this, and I just haven't seen this. Uh, so I, I just, I find all of this fascinating. I, I do, Virgil, if you could, and, and it, Jeremy Boring's response to me over Twitter, mm -hmm. and and his analogy about a shovel and. But right. I still don't know how I feel about that because I yeah. I just don't think you can bludgeon people with Christ as king. I, right. I, I don't. So what do you think of that analogy? Yeah, I, I, I think it's a poor analogy. And, and here and here's and here's my ra rationale for it. Um, what do we now do as a result? Do we get rid of all shovels? I mean, is no one now supposed to use a right. shovel because someone can be hurt? by a shovel being used in the wrong context or the wrong way. Uh, that's, a, that's a flawed a, analogy and a difficult, all of it breaks down at the, at the, at the end of the day. Jason, you, you've had people come on this show and, and, and use the, use the N word uh, with, with, with the hard ER, right? And, and you've had to determine based upon the context of what was said, whether or not they meant it in a, in a, in a, in a way that was hurtful or harmful, or whether they were using it from a standpoint of, a, of an explanation of something. I, I think it becomes incumbent upon the person whose feelings are hurt for them to seek out clarity about what it is they're trying to determine. It's not, it's not my responsibility as a Christ follower to say, oh, I guess Jewish people are going to be offended or could possibly be offended. I'll erase that language from my vocabulary so that no one's offended. That, that's 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 not how this works. Uh, we're free to say and express ourselves in whatever manner in which we see fit. And and if someone is apt, is is hurt or harmed or their feelings are hurt, they have the responsibility to ask additional questions, clarifying questions, to understand what was what the intent was behind what was said. But to but to be and uh, you know Jeremy Bourne's, I mean, running one of the largest media outlets out you know out there, uh, to to to. To, to insinuate that perhaps we can't use that language because it is definitely anti-Semitic, I, I, th I think is problematic at, at, at least, uh, and 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 needs to be and needs to be really rejected uh, altogether. I looked at his response, um, and I just looked at it again. Um, when he tries to make the analogy about shovels, he's trying to make the argument that now because. It has been used as a murder weapon. Shovel ceases to be a gardening tool. It now becomes a murder weapon. Mm -hmm. And that's where this analogy breaks down. Just because mm -hmm. someone misuses the phrase Christ is king 
does not now redefine what it objectively means. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus talks about his disciples. He says, you'll know they're my disciples by the way they love one for another. If people are using the phrase to incite violence, if they're using the phrase with negative or harmful intent, they are displaying, he must not be my king because I'm not acting in the way that the king would have me to act. But then yeah. he shows his hand, Jeremy does, by giving his second analogy to say, uh, if I tell, use the phrase to my daughter, eat some cornbread, you know, that's one thing. But if I responded to a black person's post and said, eat some cornbread, well, you're telling us you actually mean that in a negative and pejorative manner when you say that phrase, but it doesn't change what the phrase objectively means. So obviously intent is there. I'll end it by, by echoing what Virgil is, is really saying in this. Rather than being a point of offense and being a point to cancel everyone, let's make these opportunities as a point of conversation. What a great day it would be for, for Ben Shapiro or any of those who were offended when Candace Owens tweeted Christ is King. Hey, what do you mean by that? Right. And then she could say, hey, I'm saying because of X, Y, Z and what's going on with Israel and God. That's what I'm saying. Or she could say, hey, I was reading my Devo this morning and this phrase illuminate. I was reading the scriptures and I just truly believe that. And that's it. But we've gone from points of conversation to now points of offense and gone even further to points of legislating language to where now, Jason, you can't even use the phrase Christ is king, because if you do, you're anti-Semitic. Right, right. And so the bigger picture question or one of the bigger picture questions I've had or positions I've had, and I think I told Virgil this this weekend, is, is what I've done, and this has been going on maybe for 15, 20 years, is I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Uh -huh. And I mean, I really, really believe that in my heart and I try to live that out. And so I try to evaluate people, not on what they think about me, I try to figure out what do they think about God? And, and, and because I think whatever flaws they may have, whatever problem they may have with me, if they have a relationship with God, it's going to get worked out over time. And it may not be in my lifetime. I may be long dead before someone realized, like, man, Jason wasn't a bad guy and uh, blah, blah, blah. But, but, but what I've seen with, uh, I feel like, many uh, racial and ethnic minorities is we make ourselves the litmus test for God. Well, if you don't think this about black people or Jewish people, you're uh, outside uh, the body of Christ. You're not worthy. You're, you, 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 we can take your rights and we can smear you and do everything. And I just don't feel like I'm that important that what people think about me is a determining factor on how good of a person they are. I, I, you know, and this is my bias, I tend to think what they think about God is far, far, far more important. And if we could get to that standard and people quit taking all this personal offense and people quit uh, this idolatry of their own race or ethnicity or their chosen or whatever, if we could get rid of that and center God, we'd have less problems and we'd all have more free speech. <laughs> mm. It would, I can see where you're going. Um, because we read a Bible, a word, the word of God that he tells us in the word, it's going to bring a sword, meaning a division, because it's truth. When you come out and say, hey, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, that's going to put some people off just because you have aligned yourself with God. Uh, when you say, hey, God saved me, obviously people are going to think about that, what they will. They're going to think, well, what makes Jason so special? I right. knew what he used to be and what he used to do, even if you're saying that. So I get what you're saying in terms of how they're going to feel. The problem is 
because we have varying feelings, this is why even the scriptures talk about us reasoning together. It's a point of conversation, not a point of hate. If, if I feel that way, you know, you, you look at people who were once friendly, Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, friendly, but because of the conflict that takes place and because of where they stand in difference in their faith, that's where this society is. We no longer want to converse. We want to make a judgment based off what you said and move on. It, that's the point of, what did you mean by that? I thought we were cool. Like this, I'm, I'm offended by that. And then it's, well, I didn't mean it that way, but you know, because of my faith, these are the things that I believe. We get further that way than you said it and then that's it. We cut it all off. That's that's where we have to grow as a people. And if we truly are people of faith, if we truly believe what we say we believe. Mm -hmm. Virgil. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. We're so we're so polarized. Uh, all of us have taken our, our corner of the world and just decided we're not going to the, the two shall not meet. Uh, and, that, and that's a that's a big problem. The other the other thing is this ever moving target of of what it means to a be a racist or b to be anti-Semitic. Uh, there is there there is an ever growing, ever moving target. It seems to me of of, of those issues, and and we have to we have to have the standard of of God's word to say this is wrong, and here's why. Or if or if someone's going to be personally offended, uh, they're willing to have a conversation with the person who offended them to say, hey, I was offended. I mean, Anthony just laid this all out. I was offended. Here's why. Here's what that's meant to me. Is that what you meant? Uh, and and to have conversations rather than cutting people off. Uh, calling it a day and 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 smearing others to say, hey, you're anti-Semitic or you're a racist. Over time, those words begin to mean, I mean, less and less. I mean, it's almost to to be charged anymore with the, with the, with racism. It's it's a meaningless charge nowadays because of all of the things that have now been thrown into the definition of what racist or racism actually is. You, you definitely don't want that to take place with the with the idea of anti-Semitism, uh, but I think they run the risk of that. Those who who utilize the term and who 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 are Jews who hate you know who 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 are upset about language that's being used, they, they many of them will run the risk of that if we if we're not defining our terms, if we're not willing to have conversations, if we're not willing to be more open about how. When you say Christ is king, it does not mean I hate Jews. In fact, I love Jews and I want to see all of them come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If I believe my faith to be true, uh, that would be my response to those that that uh, that don't follow, whether Jew or Gentile. If you're not following Christ at the end of the day, Jason, it goes back to what you said, what you think about Christ what you think about God, that's all that matters. And what you call me or think of me as is irrelevant. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it, all, that, all it boils down to is, what do you think and believe about Jesus Christ? And I, I just refuse to, to, to give ground as it pertains to who Christ is. Christ is indeed king. So I want to play this other clip, and this is from Andrew Cleveland. This would really uh, blew my mind and confused me. And, and wanted to hear from you all on this. And, and I have respect for Andrew Clavin and, and the people at the Daily Wire, but his, Andrew Clavin, as he said in the first video, he's a Jew by birth. He is a Jesus-believing Jew. Uh, the last 20 years, he converted to Christianity. He is a Christian. But he went on to defend uh, Ben Shapiro and I think Jordan Peterson and, and, and argued basically that, you know, even though they're not Jesus believing, God is happy with where they are. I, I, I want to play the clip and I want to hear you guys. Is, is this sound logic? You know, when you spit that phrase at Ben Shapiro, my friend, Ben Shapiro. And, and you know, I, un I understand this. All, every, all of you who love Ben, and I love Ben, and Jordan Peterson, you all want to see them find Jesus because you know what joy and, and freedom that gives you, and, and you certainly feel that it alters your relationship with God. But when I think about this, to be honest with you, uh, you know, and I know some people will disagree with this, but I, 
Life is not a game show where you guess the name of God and, and you get to go to heaven. Honk, you know, yes, the name is Jesus. Uh, I look at Ben's life and I think if, if Ben were to embrace Jesus Christ, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. I just have this feeling that God has put this guy where he wants him to do what he wants him to do. And as you know, I feel that, you know, the Jews were not abandoned by God. That, 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 that didn't land well with me in terms of, uh, does, does God really want people outside the body of Christ? That, 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 that no. God ha- okay. Good. No. Um, a good read, Ephesians um, chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 3, the first three chapters, uh, Paul really lays out what God intended for us to do, and that would be being in Christ Jesus. And, and so Paul tells the church at Ephesus, he tells the church at Colossae, he tells the church at Corinth, get in Christ, how are we into Christ, baptized into Christ, into his body. So I appreciate what he says when he says, hey, I have a feeling that God wants you to be, God bless you for your feelings. Um, but God's word is his say on his feelings, his intent, and his will. And so that's where I have to leave it. Um, And again, that's why Jesus tells us, I I came to bring a sword. And what he means again by that is, when you accept him, it's going to put at times, father against son, mother against daughter. People are gonna have to decide, you're either in Christ or you're not. And that's what Jesus came to do. So if you decide to live a life to say, hey, you know what? I don't accept Jesus. I've heard Ben Shapiro say, hey, I don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. I believe he was a good guy who he says led a revolt against Rome and was unsuccessful. That's why he was crucified. That's what you believe. God's word speaks directly against that. If he is not your Lord and Savior, Hey, you stand in the hands of a just God. And, and that, again, I love Ben. I love all of God's creation. I love all of his people. But everybody is subject to God's word and his will. Yeah. Virgil? Andrew, Andrew Claven is espousing what's known as inclusivism. Uh, he, he doesn't lean into universalism. The idea of universalism is that everyone gets to heaven, you know, regardless of whether they confess Christ or not. His idea is more of an inclusivist idea, the idea that, you know, God's included some very special people. For him, it's the Jews, uh, men like Ben Shapiro, who, who, who are doing great works. If we, if, if, if we follow the logical conclusion of Andrew Clavin's thoughts there, then what we have is works righteousness. We have Ben doing good works. He's doing what God sent him to do. And so as a result, uh, he gets a pass. He doesn't have to go through Christ and he gets in. Uh, scripture is absolutely clear that there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved, but that which is Jesus Christ. That's in Acts chapter two. When we think about the fact that God the Father sent his one and only son, and again, we're thinking about this during the Passion Week. Uh, we're going to be celebrating Resurrection Sunday this Sunday. The, the, the whole storyline around God the Father sending his one and only son on behalf of all so that those who would repent of their sins and place their faith in Christ would receive eternal life is paramount. And if he, as a, if he as a Jew who's come to a saving knowledge of Christ believes that, then there is no other way for Ben to achieve eternal life, get to heaven, but going through Jesus Christ. I've heard Clavin talk about this uh, at a later point. Uh, I think I think he jumped on uh, Chuck Knox and the, the guys over there across politic uh, had a had a conversation with him. And, and he, he he initially tried to clean some of the language up and, and fix it, because, again, when he was responding to all this, it was right after the announcement had happened uh, when Clavin res- made, made this particular podcast. It was right after the announcement of Candace Owens departure. And he was kind of off the cuff. And so it's with that I kind of gave him some grace on the first pass. But when but when the guys took him to task on the second pass, in my estimation, he actually doubled down. He, he tried to kind of, he tried to kind of, you know, clean it up a little bit. Well, you know, I probably should have been a little bit more direct in my statements, 
but he still left the door wide open for this inclusivist position of, you know, guys like Ben, God's got him where he wants him. Well, I agree. God has been exactly where he wants him from a standpoint of God is sovereign over all things. Uh, so he's, he knows where Ben is and what's going on. But but the desire for God by God, according to Scripture, is that Ben would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He would repent of his sins and place his faith uh, in the finished work of Christ. There was a guy in Acts chapter 10 uh, named Cornelius, um, and he was a devout man, um, good guy. But God still called on Peter to come mm -hmm. to visit him, to preach him the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he has to put his faith in Christ and he was baptized into Christ. So this idea of he's a good guy, he does good works. It's literally textbook, a scenario where someone could say, hey, let's leave Cornelius alone. He's a good guy. Uh, and God says, no, he still needs to be in Christ Jesus. And, and I just think there's this belief that, like, well, the cost is too high for him. Okay. Right. And his family's going to be ruined. Yeah. His position, you know, would be undermined. Yeah. Uh, this will cost him money. Don't you yeah. understand that? Yeah. Yeah. So Scripture. God doesn't want him to lose money. He doesn't want his family upset. This is this is the same God that did not withhold his own son right. for our salvation. So right. so if we're talking about a cost, it cost him his life. Yeah. I this think is, that's worth way more than all the money in the world. This this Herzog, is this I'll give is, you the final say. Yeah, this is the same God who 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 also uh, said in His Word, "What what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul?" Uh, we definitely mm -hmm. want to see Ben and and all 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 you know Jews, Gentiles, all folks who are outside of the faith come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it couldn't be a better time for them to think about that that and to consider that than than we than uh, than they than they can during this week, which is uh, the the week of the Passion, the Resurrection of Christ. And so I want to add this just to, I don't want to call it see why my rear end, but just, just for clarity. My father, the per, I love, respect, uh, passed on great wisdom. I love my father, respect my father. Mm -hmm. He died outside the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. he, he was not a believer. And so... Uh, the same thing I wanted for my father. I, I, and so the love, respect, and admiration I have for my father, same for Ben Shapiro and, and other, you know, there's no different standard here. This isn't right. some little hostility towards Jewish people because there is no hostility. Right. It's just like, hey, come on over here, brother. And, and you know, trust me, it's good over here. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's, it's the exact same thing and I don't again don't look down comparing this man to my father I couldn't give him any higher praise right but in error my father was in error mm. and and so anyway uh, we will play some harmony thank you guys and uh, we'll see you tomorrow So divided, stop fighting and stand tall. We used to be a nation, one united. Now we're headed for a downfall. Gotta let your light shine down. What we need more than anything now. Harmony, let's make a simple vow. Let's come together now. Harmony, put all your weapons down. Tell us